In this episode of Highlight Sundays, we have PSAs and art. Hello and welcome back to Highlight Sundays. It is the 50th week of 2013 and here are your highlights. So today we have two PSAs for you and the first one is kind of breaking news. It just happened as of the time of filming which is Friday. So well not quite breaking news when you watch this but well it actually concerns everyone which is why I thought I should mention it. This article comes from Mashable and is entitled Now, you can't really block anyone on Twitter. So here's the deal. Previously, if you know you were harassed by someone on Twitter, what you could do is you could block them. As a result, they won't really be able to read your tweets. As far as I'm aware, they'll be able to read one page worth of tweets. And of course, on top of that, they will not be able to send you messages. They will not be able to interact with you in any way. Of course, this pertains to public Twitter accounts if you're actually using, you know, a protected a private account, you don't really have to worry about that, seeing as that if someone's harassing you, you just make them unfollow you. So essentially what Twitter has done now is it has lifted some of the restrictions from banned users. What this means is, even if you've banned someone, they can still actually come to your profile, read everything you post, they'll still be able to do things like retweet or even reply to you. It's just that you wouldn't see them. As this article says, essentially what this means is if someone is stalking you, you just put on a blindfold. But however, we have to look at this objectively and honestly, this really isn't the hugest issue in the world. Think about this. Previously, if someone was blocked, essentially what they could do is they could sign out or sign into a different account and they will still be able to read all your tweets. They will also still be able to interact with you with their new account. So essentially, the impact of this change is minimal. Now, there is only really one case where things can get pretty ugly, and that is if someone reasonably famous hates on someone who is also reasonably famous. These kind of things happen, I know. Essentially, what can happen now is if the famous person who was blocked actually retweets one of the posts from the other person, all the followers of this hater can essentially go over there and cause trouble, seeing as that they are not individually blocked. So yes, this remains an issue. In the past, it wasn't so bad, as in you could still kind of get this effect working, but you have to do a lot more for that to happen. But here's the deal. My personal opinion on Twitter is, if you have a public profile, it is a public profile. Everything you put up goes up everywhere. So the issue here is not about you know, the hate or how the hate is handled, but the fact that this is something that is innate with Twitter itself. I mean, this is the way Twitter has been written to work. It doesn't make the problem right. It just makes it so much harder to fix without a fundamental change. If we want to get down to the root of this problem, we may need to fundamentally rethink what Twitter really is. And that is a change that needs time and, you know, a reasonable amount of effort. So my advice is this, if you really do feel a need to protect yourself, turn your account to private. That's really all you can do right now with the state things are. Hopefully the Twitter team will look for, you know, a better solution to this problem. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that better solution seems to be simply a reversal of what they have changed. Now, as of the time of actually editing this video, which is maybe a couple of hours after shooting it, well, Twitter has announced that they are actually going to reverse these changes. What this means is some of the discussions that we've just had has become rather irrelevant, but well, I've decided to leave everything in anyway, so you can have a feel of, you know, my thoughts on the entire issue. Huge props to Twitter for responding so quickly. This must have been all over in a couple of hours, which is nice. So now that I've spent too much time talking about Twitter, let us move on to the rest of our articles. Our next article comes from Gizmodo and it's entitled Popular Android Flashlight App Straight Up Lied About Selling Data So essentially this is what happened in a nutshell There is this app, essentially all it does is offer flashlight functionality When you first start it up, it asks you if you want to be tracked for internal purposes 
and essentially you are given a choice to say yes or no. So unfortunately, regardless of which choice you choose, your data is actually being collected. And apparently there was evidence that these guys are actually selling your data to third party companies. Apparently there is now a court ruling to tell them to get rid of all the data that they collected that they shouldn't have. So the moral of the story is this, read what it says on the tin, but don't trust it 100%. Some amount of thinking is still a great idea sometimes. For example, many people in a comment section of this article actually asked, why does a flashlight app even need the permissions to actually read your location data? It doesn't. Under no circumstances does it need to do that. And so if you see that permission listed on Google Play, that should ring an alarm bell. Having said that, it's true, it's not that easy to you know, spot these kind of things. Sometimes there just isn't a clear indication. So really all there is left for us to do is to remain as vigilant as possible and you know, try our best to stick to known names. Basically anything to reduce the risk. So now let's move out of the PSAs and into the art. This one is from Mashable and it's entitled Haunting Multiple Exposure Photos Blends Humans and Nature. Now, multi-exposure photography isn't something that I've really covered on this channel. Essentially, it describes a really cool effect where the same image is actually exposed twice at different places. And essentially what happens is similar to doing an ad operation in an image editor. What you get is just an overlay of the two images where essentially the intensities at each point adds up. So if you want to see this effect in action, head down to the video description and look for the Mashable article. It's a pretty cool effect, especially when you mix, you know, like a portrait with some nature photography. More art. Our next article comes from Gizmodo and is entitled, What the world would look like if you could see cell phone signals. Essentially, this is an artistic visualization of, you know, what it'll be like if cell phone signals were actually visible. And as you would expect, the image is essentially all covered with all the signals. So beautiful pieces of art, yes, but it's also thought provoking in a certain way. At least for me, it tells us how much effort we've actually gone through to you know, bring everyone to this very connected state. The image also covers certain technical aspects that we can learn from, things like actual cell coverage. As you can imagine, basically cell broadcasting towers will have a certain range and you can actually see that in the image with little hexagonal spots where each cell tower actually covers. So very cool visualization, very colorful as well, and I highly recommend you check it out. As always, link in the video description. And that essentially wraps up all our articles for this episode of Highlight Sundays. An update on my phone, it's been sent for repair, which is why of course I'm actually using this little Nokia brick at the moment. Unfortunately, getting a phone repaired after it's out of warranty isn't a very cheap deal. In fact, just to get them to look at a phone, I already have to pay $30 and I'm still waiting for them to tell me how much the actual repair costs. Such is life in the world of tech. Hopefully, when I see you again this time next week, I'll have my phone back, alive and kicking. Anyway, that's all there is for this episode of Highlight Sundays. As always, if you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. Until next time, you're watching 0612TV.